Hello everybody and welcome to Randall's Island. Today we were on the roof of our five borough building, the operational headquarters for the parks department. And as you can see, it is a green roof, which is in and of itself beautiful and offers some stunning and unusual views of the city. We've got the Bronx over there um, and the on-ramps to the Triborough Ridge all around us. And tons and tons and tons of plants of different kinds growing in different ways that make up this green roof an incredibly sustainable feature of building design that the New York City Parks Department has been pioneering for over a decade. Our green roof coordinator, Max Lerner, is here to tell us more about it. Hi, Max. Hey, how's it going? Thanks, Thanks for meeting us here. Okay, first and foremost, what is a green roof? <laughs> Pleasure. Uh, put simply, it's plants on top of a roof. As you may or may not know, most buildings have either a tar roof or maybe a shingle slate roof or even a terracotta roof depending on what state you're in. These are all engineered materials although they might be good for keeping the elements out they're not always the best for the environment so instead we're reinventing the urban landscape by adding natural roofing systems to our buildings which not only do all the things that engineered roofs do but they also have a lot of other really amazing environmental benefits. Okay and this green roof um, which was originally begun over a decade ago kind of shows off all the different ways that you might be able to build a green roof and Max is gonna take us on a short tour um, of this model of models. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't need him to identify these plants <laughs> as tomatoes. Um, they're green but they still look delicious. Um, but they are growing perhaps in an unusual way. I don't know if I've ever seen this before. What's what's going on here with these tomatoes? Well, that's a good question. If you perk up your ears, it might make this explanation make a little bit more sense. If you listen closely, you can hear water running, and that's because this is a hydroponic system. So the hydro, water, instead of growing in soil or some sort of soil, which is more traditional, we're instead growing in an entirely aquatic system. So we have a basin down here that's filled with water and organic nutrients for plants. And then what we do is we take plants, they are root, so no soil, and we put them into these little cups here. You can see a little baby one right here. And they're, every so often these pumps kick on, which you're hearing now, and it pumps water from the base all the way up the tower. And then it trickles down across the open root systems of all the little plant plugs in here. And it's kind of like an all-you-can-eat buffet plant for plants because there's no soil or anything in the way of the plants picking up as many nutrients as they possibly can. So it really sparks some ridiculous growth in plants. It's about five times as productive as the comparable footprint of if they were in a row bed. All right, and that's why we have so many tomatoes even going strong this late in the season, this mm -hmm. last week of summer. Okay, and here... Um, are more vegetables that are um, pretty easily identifiable. I'm a big fan of basil, mm -hmm. um, and you've got all kinds of other salad greens growing here, mm -hmm. and other vegetables. I see peppers, cucumbers, Some more eggplants. tomatoes, eggplants, all delicious. Um, and just one example of the kinds of things you can grow on a roof of all places. Mm -hmm. um, you can basically grow anything up here that would grow in this climate region. So there's, you're seeing a lot of people come up in the city now that are willing to pioneer this. It's really amazing as long as it's a plant that grows in the ambient weather conditions in New York, there's no reason you couldn't grow something you could grow on a ground or in a community garden. You could also grow that on the rooftop. And depending on where you are in the city, you might not have that ground space to do it. So it's really important that we optimize on our millions and millions of square feet of rooftop space to provide food, especially really interesting foods in neighborhoods that might need it or in places where they might want to try some interesting food that just isn't available at the supermarket. All right. And then um, this right across the way is a different, an example of a different kind of the way that you might plant a green roof mm -hmm. that um, will take a roof and make it just much more sustainable. Okay, mm -hmm. so what's going on here? This is kind of like a living carpet, you might say. These are sedums, which are common on a lot of large-scale green roofs. They're small, low-lying, succulent plants 
they'll basically grow in any conditions. They grow in any sort of water. They can grow in water conditions. They can grow with any sort of nutrient. They can grow in very, very, very shallow soil. As you can see, this is only about one to two inches deep. There's a lot of different kinds. You can see this is a sedum. This is a sedum that looks completely different. Here's a completely different one. If you look back there, you can see some that are taller, some have flowers. There's a lot of different varieties, but the main thing here is they grow very densely. They really don't have any requirements to for maintenance because they're so dense there's no room for weeds to grow in and it's kind of just like a no mess no fuss solution to get lots of plants all over the place all right and um they're great for roofs in particular because their um root system is so shallow mm -hmm. which doesn't add a lot of bulk mm -hmm. or a lot of weight because they're planted in a special substrate correct so we use a lot of different interesting substrates that throughout the roof because regular plain old dirt that you would find in the ground is very very heavy if you imagine your imagination a one foot by one foot by one foot cube of dirt when it's wet it's about 100 pounds it's very very heavy so we need to use not all every building can hold that heavy of a soil so we use engineered soils down here you can see this is perlite it's expanded volcanic glass these are actually expanded shale slate and clay, so they're puffed stones. So if you look really carefully, you can see little holes in there. So they're lighter than they actually would be if they were just regular naturally occurring stones. We use expanded post-consumer styrofoam, which floats when it gets wet, so it automatically aerates. We're doing a lot of clever things here to make sure that these systems can get to the depths we want to match the plants we want to grow while not overburdening the roof. Ingenious. All right, I see completely different kinds of plants over here on this side. Mm -hmm. So this is more of a native mix. So counter to the sedums, this is has the same types of benefits. It's going to be sucking up rainwater. It's going to be providing corridors for pollinators to eat and thrive in. It's going to be sucking up climate change and gases. It's going to be helping to fight against urban heat island effects. It's going to be helping to fight against combined sewer overflows. But because these plants are so much bigger than these plants, it's doing all those things to a much higher degree. The trade-off there is that it does need more maintenance. So we have some really amazing gardeners here that help weed it and take care of it and make sure in a heat wave or in a drought that they're getting a little bit extra water and TLC. So it's ideal to use native plants because they'll do more for the environment, but it's not always the perfect match for every building. So you have to keep that in mind. Okay, right. And again, this is, this is sort of like this, these test cases here of the different things you can do as the parks department leads the way in greening roofs all over the city and frankly the world <laughs> um, all right and you can see as the native plants are supposed to be is. they're attracting pollinators Have that one looks like here. some sort of beetle that is kind of like blending <laughs> in with the bees there's so many insects here that we haven't even planned for that i can't possibly <laughs> identify all of them <laughs> Um, hello in Sioux Falls. All right. And of uh, you can maybe have noticed the um, solar panels that we have up here, which help to run the system mm -hmm. that we have up here. And um, here are some more panels mm -hmm. and some more um, native plantings and grasses. And... We've got our interns and seasonal workers over there working Woo! on a, the latest experiment. <laughs> We're doing a little bit of a combination of a couple of elements here. So we talked a little bit about engineered soils. So they're working with uh, post-consumer styrofoam based soil that's 80% engineered material, 20% organic material. So it's very, very light and you can see it now starting to float as they add water. And then these are just incidental weeds that we're pulling off the roof, purslane, which is not a weed that you really need to vilify. It's actually edible and a quite a tasty salad green. So we're trying to see if we can sustainably reuse some of the things, some of the weeds that had grown incidentally in the other systems, pull them out and use them here intentionally so they're no longer a weed. There you go. Um, and delicious. All right, um, and th there's just so much going on here. We're barely even touching the surface. Um, if you're interested in building a green roof, you can make an appointment to come here and see the different systems that we have on display, kind of talk to these experts about what might work for you. Um, but in the meantime, we're gonna show you this um, really extraordinary thing that's going on over here. Ooh. It looks like bees are coming home to feed. They've done all their forage and now they're bringing it back to the hive as the day is starting to come to an end. 
So we have incidental pollinators here. We have lots of butterflies and bees and other interesting birds and insects of prey. But we also have pollinators that we plan for. So we have these 10 hives. These are Italian honeybees. Each one of these boxes has 30,000 bees in it. So if you do your fast math, that's 300,000 planned pollinators on the roof, which really go a long way for making sure that these plants are as healthy and vibrant as possible. They also make the maintenance for this roof possible. In addition to human gardeners, we also have insect gardeners helping us out here. So it's really quite nice. There's a nice symbiotic relationship going on between the plants and the pollinators. They help us take care of the plants, they get their food, and then they give us a little bit of honey every now and then. All right, well, thank you, bees. Thank you, plants. Thank you. And thank you, Max, <laughs> for you this much. tour of the green roof on Fibro <laughs> that you've helped to pioneer yes, to great success. Thank you very much.